Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Coming up on Monday, January 20th, the nation will observe the birthday of one of the world's best known advocates of nonviolent social change strategies, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was the chief spokesman for nonviolent activism in the civil rights movement, which successfully protested racial discrimination in federal and state law. The campaign for a federal holiday in Dr. King's honor began after his assassination in 1968. President Ronald Reagan signed the holiday into law in 1983, and it was observed three years later. My first guests are here to tell us about their upcoming memorial and prayer service in honor of Dr. King. Miss Armida Kilgore and Sister Callista are both representatives of the Archdiocese Black Catholic Commission. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you both for being here. And this is your 23rd year that the Black Catholic Ministry Commission has been a part of the Dr. King Memorial Prayer Service. If you would tell us more about it. Well, it started in 1991 uh, at Sacred Heart. Uh, seminary. Mm -hmm. One of the seminarians, who is now our Monsignor, decided that that his black brothers, I mean his white brothers, should know more about the black Catholics mm -hmm. and the black ministry and black music. And so he started this program. Wow. And where in fact is it going to be taking place coming up on January 18th? It's going to be held at St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church. And on that second is and Burleigh. It's second and Burleigh, and the time that the prayer service will be kicking off? We'll be having a musical um, prelude at 1.30, mm -hmm. and the program starts at 2 o'clock. Okay, so uh, people can get there prior to 1.30 to enjoy all of the festivities yes. that are in store. And this year's theme is, Who is Your God? So uh, explain that theme and where you're going with that concept. You want to take that the, the fact that there are so many things happening, it's as if there is no God. Mm -hmm. And we're saying, where is your God in your life? And if God is in your life, then your life will change and the nation will change too. Yeah, and basically when you uh, talk about that concept, that's kind of what we mm -hmm. saw uh, with Dr. King and the journey that he and so many other freedom-loving people fought for. We saw our nation change in mm -hmm. uh, many different ways, but we still have a long way to go, you would agree? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So, of course, there were some states that initially resisted observing the King holiday, and it wasn't officially observed in all 50 states, and this is hard for me to believe, until the year 2000. So, uh, why, in your opinion, is the Martin Luther King Day particularly important in the city of Milwaukee? Well, first of all, Milwaukee is a very, though they don't like to admit, a very segregated city. And until we are all accepted as Dr. King asked by the nature of our character rather than the color of our skin, it'll always be necessary it, that we bring out what he thought. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, there are a number of reminders around the city that uh, uh, remind us that Dr. King and his dream are so very important. So even though Milwaukee has been labeled as hyper-segregated, we do have some um, landmarks that are in remembrance of such a great man. Of course, we have King Drive, and then there's King Elementary, the King Library, the King Community Center on Valete, there's the Health Center, the MLK Business Improvement District, and of course, the beautiful mm -hmm. bronze statue mm -hmm. that stands in downtown Milwaukee that was commissioned by the YD. WCA. So uh, with all of these things, um, it's great reminders that we all need to uh, just keep in mind exactly what he had in mind for all of us as human beings. Yes. yes. And it's documented that Dr. King visited Milwaukee at least two times in August of 1956 and then January of 1964, where on that particular visit, he spoke to over 
6,000 Milwaukeeans for 40 minutes at the Milwaukee Auditorium. And we were talking off camera. You do remember yes. Dr. King visiting yes. Milwaukee, yes. but you were one of those people mm -hmm. who were at home watching it on TV. But yes. after viewing all of the things going on nationwide, what was it like for you watching that, knowing he was here in the city? Well, it was very exciting, and I was very upset because I couldn't go there. At the time, I was working third shift, mm -hmm. and I had to rest. But um, I don't know, it was something that I wish I had been there, uh, just to, even if I had to stand off like seven or eight blocks to see him, but I was unable to do yeah, it. Yeah, and that's, that's a situation for a lot of people. They were unable to be there, <laughs> but it's still a blessing to yes. be able to say that you uh, witnessed such that a great man. Here, yes. Absolutely. And during his 1956 visit, neither the Sentinel or the Journal wrote about his visit. And in 1964, OnMilwaukee.com reports that the FBI reportedly contacted Marquette University telling them not to award him an honorary degree because they felt that he was affiliated with communists. So uh, when you saw these type of things, you saw them on television, but you didn't read about it in the paper. What are your thoughts? I wasn't surprised mm. because now, I mean, then, as now sometimes, we don't get any recognition. And in l the little recognition we give, it's always in a, a negative way. Mm -hmm. So I was not, I was neither surprised, actually not even disappointed, because I really didn't expect anymore. Mm -hmm. As I said before, this is a very prejudiced city. Well, what do you think, sister? that Dr. King's advice would be for the city of Milwaukee if he were alive today? I think that he would say, many years have passed. You still need to look at where you are and where you need to go so far as housing, so far as job, the job market, education, and work, work together. We cannot do this alone. Absolutely. It is well known that Milwaukee is battling issues and that's what this show is all about. Uh, some of the things you mentioned, there's high unemployment rates, uh, violence is a concern. Uh, we're still regarded as being a hyper segregated city and Milwaukee's poverty rate was in the top 15 among the nation's big cities. In your opinion, uh, how can Milwaukee go forward in trying to solve some of our city's issues? Hmm. Well, one thing, we have to work together. Um, we have to come together as a group and really and truly try to solve our problems. You know, with some people saying, yeah, well, we can do this, that, or the other to solve the problem. Unless you really sit down and try to resolve within yourselves whatever the problem is, it's never going to be. It's never going to change. Um, there are just so many things that really need to change in the city. One simple thing is whenever, when a black person can go into a retail store and walk in and not be followed or thought to, uh, about to steal something, it's, it's just that so many places you go you feel unwelcome even though they accept your money and they accept, they try to act like they accept you. It's, it's, it's really hard to explain, hmm. except that we are just not treated as equals. Well, I would like to ask Sister quickly, uh, how important is the faith component uh, when trying to instill the changes that we've talked about and also some of the things that Armida has um, displayed as her opinion? Faith is very important, and if nothing else, African Americans, black people, have always held on to the faith and have taught their children, this is what we need. We need to keep the faith in whatever we do. And we need to depend upon God, not just on our own strength, because that is what Dr. Martin Luther King certainly believed in, the strength of God to lead him and to lead his people. And I'd love for us to take this moment to reiterate the details for your 23rd annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Prayer Service. It's um, 
January 18th mm -hmm. at 1.30 p.m. We start with a musical prelude and the program is at 2 p.m. Right. It's at St. Martin de Porres Church on 2nd and Burlack. And everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. I thank you both for coming by and sharing uh, the information about the prayer memorial and also uh, just lending your opinion on where we are today, especially here in the city of Milwaukee. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you. Armida Kilgore and Sister Kalisa are both representatives of the Archdiocese Black Catholic Ministry Commission. After Dr. King's assassination in April 1968, 15,000 people marched through the streets of Milwaukee. It remains the largest civil rights demonstration in city history and was among the biggest in the country at the time. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll find out more about an event that has been going on for 30 years in celebration of Dr. King's birthday at the Marcus Center for the Performing Arts in downtown Milwaukee. We'll be right back.